it has recently struck me that the whole poem with the internet is the fact that you can interact. So I thought that today, instead of just throwing you a bunch of links, uh, I'd uh, answer some questions I've got from the, the user, users of UG uh, in the feedback of the Shred Masterclass lessons. So I'm going to start out uh, with a question from GTB24. Uh, and he asked me, when I bend at the 20 or 21st frets, they just cut out, even if I bend up or down. Is it my guitar or my playing? Uh, now, uh, this question is from one of the first lessons, which dealt with a curious coincidence solo. Uh, well, the answer to that is, well, first of all, what GTB24 is asking about is this. And then the note just dies there on top. That's what happens to him. Um, well, the answer is, it's not your guitar. It's very unlikely to be your guitar because it's a very common problem among beginners. So what happens is, probably, when you're starting out the bend, you have a good angle to the fretboard. And that's why you get a uh, good, uh, good tone out of, of the note. But as you're bending, your angle is changing, like this. And then, eventually, your finger is just has the wrong angle and therefore the note disappears. So you try to uh, have a constant angle. Should be, you know, not really a 90 degree, but almost you know, to get a good sound. Uh, now that's one possible solution to your problem, but it could also be that you, um, if I illustrate it down here, that you are actually fretting on the wrong place. So uh, let's say we wanted to bend on the fifth fret here, uh, then you should not be uh, on the fret, obviously, or you should not be too far away from the fret either, because that will make you lose sustain. You should be just close to the fret. That's the best place to bend. You should not be here. You should be here, just beside. And not too far away either. Hope that helps. Then we have a question from Guitar Noob, who says, Oh yeah, and I thought everybody in Sweden was blonde. Do you dye your hair? My, my answer to that is, no, I do not dye my hair. Then we have a question from Jackie Shear, who says, Hey, awesome vid dude. Mastered it and impressed some girls in a guitar shop. Ha ha ha. And the shop staff. But yeah, totally helped me with my soloing. Thanks a lot. Uh, well, thank you, Jackie Shear, and good luck with the girls. And uh, we have a statement from Mr. Mister, who says, I finished this thing in a day. Uh, I believe he is referring to the, the Kirk Hammett lesson. Uh, congratulations to you, Mr. Mister. Okay, and then we have a question from Mike Mann, who asks, where do you get those awesome shirts? Well, I buy them at a store called Henrits and Mauritz uh, here in uh, Sweden. Uh, I believe it's an international store, so you uh, can uh, probably find it in your country too. Uh, but uh, the good thing is they have cheap quality shirts. And then we have a question about finger placement. Actually, we have quite a lot of questions about that. Uh, but I'll take one that's from The Unholy. And he says, Chris, when you play a note on the 12th fret of the high E, and the 15th of the B, why do you use your third finger? I always learned that if a note was three frets higher than the note your first finger was fretting, you use the pinky. No? Isn't that right? Uh, well, if you were on acoustic guitar, that would be a very good 100% valid rule. But on the electric guitar, since the distance between the frets uh, decreases uh, when we're high up here, uh, it's not a very handy rule, you know, to play one fret per finger. Actually, it's better to spread out, you know, just a few fingers. Um, and um, I think the specific lick which you are referring to here is probably this one. And the reason I play with my um, 
index finger here and the ring finger is because I want the strength out of the ring finger. I don't have quite the same strength in the little, little finger. So that's something I obviously should practice. But until I get the same string, strength, I'm going to be using my ring finger when illustrating the lick at important occasions. Uh, but obviously it would be cool if I could use uh, you know, more the, the little finger down here, for instance. <laughs> because it's not very handy to use the ring finger here. So it all depends on where you are on the guitar. Uh, but if I were to give you a general answer on finger placement, I would say that you should strive to uh, move your hand as little as possible. What I mean by that is, if you have this kind of scale... So I, as you probably noticed, I was moving my hand back and forth, back and forth. And that's because I use the wrong finger placement. Like that. I want to spread uh, my fingers out and use this kind of fingering. So the rule is try to move your hand as little uh, as possible and, uh, and in order to do that you will need to find some uh, good fingerings because if you find that you are constantly moving up and down with the hand then you're doing the wrong thing. Okay, so good luck with that. Then we have a question from Damien666. <laughs> Curious coincidence is awful. Who would honestly listen to it and enjoy? And I don't understand how a four minute solo is defined into the theme of a curious coincidence. Oh, and the sunglasses are shit too. Well, Damien, my answer to that is... You don't seem to like my song very much. You don't seem to like me or my sunglasses. But I still believe that deep inside you are a nice guy. Okay, and then we have a question from Shusovarin, uh, which in Swedish is pronounced Shusovaren. And he asked me, Christopher, what is Svaraji Bordur? Which means, Christopher, where in Sweden do you live? And my answer to that is uh, Stockholm, which means Stockholm. And then we have a question from Santhony1987 who says, good god man, what's that killer lick you pull at 11.50? I, I looked that up and the Santhony is speaking about um, our first Kirk Hammett style lesson where I, I do this kind of lick when improvising. <laughs> Which is in fact a pretty cool lick. Um, <laughs> if I may say so. And um, what I'm doing is I'm alternating between speed picking and legato, and I think that gives it a pretty distinct sound. Uh, but first, which notes am I playing? <clears throat> I'm starting from the 15th fret on the B string, and then going up chromatically. So 15, 16, 17, and then up to the E string playing the same note. 15, 16, 17. And then going back, 16, 15, back to the B string, 17, 16, and then it starts again. Now you could play this with 100% uh, picking. Which is okay, but I prefer the sound of, you know, alternating, you get this kind of which is much cooler than, than, you know, having all the notes at the same uh, dynamics. that close up in order to get the exact